Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. I would like to continue talking about improper integrals, basically a couple of examples uh, for this lecture. Um, this lecture is part of the course of Advanced Mathematics for Teenagers and High School Students. I suggest you to watch this lecture from unizor.com website, uh, although I'm sure you can find it on YouTube, etc. But uh, the website gives you detailed notes for each lecture as well as the ability to, um, to take exams, for instance, for, for any topic. So, um, I have four different examples of um, definite uh, integrals, which can be called improper, because of certain infinities, either uh, at the limits or at the values of the function. So. Example number one, integral from one, from zero to one, two x, one over my minus x squared dx. Now, what's improper for this particular um, integral? Well, look, we have this denominator, which as x approaching one, uh, it goes to zero. So if denominator goes to zero, 2x is, well, basically uh, um, some, something around number 2, obviously, if x goes to 1. So we have an infinity. Now, how can we deal with this particular integral, considering we have this infinity? Um, so the function goes to infinity right near um, the margin. So it's basically asymptotically goes to infinity. Well, obviously we have to convert it into a limit because this is a definition of improper integral. We go to b where b goes to 1 of this function. So that's the definition in this particular case because we cannot define this particular function on this segment using um, dividing the uh, interval of integration into smaller intervals uh, and when the number of intervals goes to infinity and the size of intervals goes to zero then we can talk about the Riemann sums so to speak. Now there are no Riemann sums if this is going to infinity if function goes to infinity on this segment. So we have converted into this because on this particular segment now when b uh, is approaching 1 I'm ob obviously talking about b approaching to 1 from the left sometimes you can put 1 minus 0 which basically means the same thing uh, approaching from the left so in any case so let's try to find this particular integral now this is a proper integral which we can use formula of uh, Newton Leibniz to to integrate it. So that's equal to limit b goes to one. Now, how can we integrate this? Well, um, let's just again make a little uh, intelligent guess. You see, 2x is x square derivative, right? Which means I can combine 2x and dx and replace it with uh, d of x square divided by 1 minus x square, right? Now, why did I do this? Well, because now I have a much simpler expression based on x squared. So, now, um, how can I um, proceed further? Well, I'll just make a substitution. Now, if um, x is equal to 0, t is equal to 0, If x is equal to b, t is equal to b squared. 
right? So I have replaced, made, uh, I, I made this substitution. So differential is this, 1 minus x squared is this, but my limits are different because limits of the t, if x from 0 to b, from, for, for the t it will be from 0 to b squared, right? All right, now this is something relatively familiar because um, it's equal to limit b goes to 1. Now what is this? Now you remember that derivative of 1 over t is natural logarithm. So um, derivative of 1 minus, uh, of uh, 1 divided by 1 minus t would be natural logarithm of 1 minus t um, with a sign minus, right? Because it's a minus. So derivative of logarithm of this would be 1 over 1 uh, minus t times derivative of minus t, which is minus. And we have to substitute values from 0 to b squared. Right? So this is my indefinite integral from dt over 1 minus t minus logarithm of this. So uh, now all I have to do is substitute and the substitution will be limit b is equal uh, uh, goes to 1 now if I will substitute b square I will have minus logarithm of 1 minus b square right minus which means plus because this is a minus uh, logarithm of 1 right when t is equal to 0 So, logarithm of 1 is uh, one second. Did I make a mistake? Because that goes to infinity actually. Okay, so so this goes to this is zero, right? And when b goes to one, one minus b square goes to zero, which means logarithm goes to uh, uh, so this would be infinitesimal value, right? And the logarithm, you remember the function logarithm? When my argument goes to zero, logarithm goes to minus infinity. So this would be not convergent number, so it will be infinity. Which means that the whole integral is uh, non-convergent. So this is an example of a non-convergent um, integral. And the answer is, there is no answer. Well, sometimes people can say this is infinity because this is minus infinity and this is minus, so it's a plus infinity. So you can say that. However, I probably would prefer that instead of saying that integral is equal to infinity, quite frankly, it's much better to say Inter integral is non-convergent. So basically there is no limit and uh, there is no value. Okay, next. Next is integral from 1 to infinity sine of 1 over x divided by x squared dx. Now, here also I'm kind of making this thing a little simpler because you remember that 1 over x is equal to 
minus 1 over x squared, right? So the derivative from, from 1 over x is, which means that this is equal to um, minus integral from 1 to infinity sine of 1x d of 1x, right? Differential of 1x is the derivative, which is this, times dx, so that's why we have it in the denominator, and since it's minus, I have to neutralize this minus, that's why I put minus here. Now, in turn, what is sine t times dt? Well, this is a differential of cosine t with a minus sign, right? Because what is the derivative from a cosine? Minus sine, and this minus gives you plus sine and dt. So, now, instead of basically t, I have 1 over x, which doesn't really matter. So I can say this is integral from 1 to infinity. This minus, and if I will put d cosine of 1 over x, it will negate this minus, right? So it's the, the derivative from a cosine is minus sine, and this minus will be plus, that's why I have plus, uh, which is equal to... Okay, now let's do this limit thing. Limit b goes to infinity, and since I already have a differential, I know what's my um, antiderivative in, uh, indefinite integral, so it's cosine 1 over x. Um, yeah, from b to 1. All right. Now, if I substitute b, it will be cosine of limit b goes to infinity, cosine 1 over b minus, and the fifth one would be cosine of 1. Now, what is this? Now, this is the constant, that's why it's outside of the limit. So, when b goes to infinity, my 1 over b goes to 0, so cosine goes to a cosine of 0, which is 1, right? So, the whole thing would be, therefore, one minus cosine of one. That's the answer. Okay, next. Okay, next is a couple of problems which are actually related. Here is what I wanted to do. I wanted to investigate how the function y is equal to x to the power of a integrated. Well, you see, we have this is infinity, and this is infinity, right? Now, I'm obviously talking for a negative a in this particular case, because for positive a, we don't have obviously um, convergent results, right? With a positive way it goes like this. So obviously integral to infinity would, would, not, would not converge to any number. And uh, it's not really interesting, right? So we're talking about negative way. All right. So, for instance, we have 1 over x, right? one of the examples. Another example is 1 over x squared. 1 over x squared goes like this. It's higher there and lower here. Which means this piece should be smaller um, as far as uh, compared with 1 over x. But this piece from 0 to 1, the area under the curve should be bigger. Or we can have something like this. Let's say it's 1 over 
square root of x. This is 1 over x square, and this is 1 over square. So it's higher than 1 over x in infinity, but lower than 1 over x um, when it's close to 0. So my question is, um, you see, considering we have infinity here and infinity there, I don't want to deal with two infinities. I would like to deal with only one. So I will divide this problem into two. So my first problem is this one. So I'm investigating this function, integrability of this function, from 1 to infinity. And then my second problem would be from 0 to 1. All right. So that's my preamble to this problem, to these two problems. So right now we are talking about integral from 1 to infinity of x to the power of a dx. Okay. Uh, obviously, let's do what we know how to approach it, right? So it's limit from 1 to b as b goes to infinity um, x to the power of a dx. Okay. So now it's a definite integral with um, concrete uh, margins from 1 to b, and we can very easily basically do the whole thing, right? So what is the oops, b? What is the indefinite integral? Well, obviously it's x to the power a plus 1 divided by a plus 1, right? Because derivative of x to the power of a plus 1 is equal to a plus 1 times x to the power of a, and it will cancel this a plus 1, so I will have only x to the power of a. So this is the correct formula. But is it always correct? Well, first of all, we do know that we are talking about a less than 0. However, there is one point, which is a is equal to minus 1, which is not exactly the good one in this case, right? So it's not really working always. Okay, so let's put a not equal to minus 1. So we are talking about function x to the power of a for all negative a except 1 over x, right? When a is equal to minus 1, it's 1 over x. And you remember that in this case, the integral is equal to logarithm x. But let's just consider it later on. So, now... My question is, and we have to substitute uh, b and 1, right? Here. All right. So, what is this? It's limit. b goes to infinity. Uh, b to the power a plus 1 divided by a plus 1 minus 1 to the power of min uh, a plus 1, which is 1. Or, if you wish, I can take 1 over a plus 1 outside of the limit, and in the limit I can put b to the power b to the power a plus 1 minus 1, right? 1 over a plus 1 is outside. Now, what is this? b goes to infinity, so it's infinitely growing variable. If this power is positive, then infinitely growing number to a positive power will be infinitely growing, right? We need this power to be negative to bring down um, this, this growth, right? Because if this is negative, it's actually like 1 over something in a positive degree, so it will be an um, infinitesimal variable. So 1 over infinitely growing would be infinitesimal. You understand it, right? So basically, 
Our condition is, if a plus 1 is less than 0, if it's negative, then, and only then, this integral has uh, a limit, because this thing would go to 0, it would be infinitesimal, b to the power a plus 1, where a plus 1 is negative and b is infinitely growing, would be infinitely growing denominator, right? So that would be 0. So the result would be minus 1 over a plus 1. So that's my result. <coughs> if a plus 1 is negative, then this particular integral is equal to this value. However, we have forgotten now, let me just write down it, a less than minus 1, okay? That's the same thing. Now, we did not really cover a is equal to minus 1. So, for a less than minus 1, this is the correct result. How about for a equals to minus 1? What do I have in this case? Well, in this case, I have 1 over x, right? for a is equal to minus 1. And in this case, my indefinite integral would be logarithm x. Because derivative of logarithm is 1 over x. Now, if I will substitute b, I will have And if I will substitute 1, I will have logarithm of 1, which is 0. And what is this? Well, logarithm b, if b goes to infinity, the function logarithm, if you remember, logarithm goes to infinity, so my integral is not converging. So there is no value. So this particular value, a is equal to minus 1, that's when it's not integrable. So only for a is less than minus 1, this integral actually exists. And let me just, as an example, as an example, give you a concrete value. If a is equal to minus 2, for instance, which is less than minus 1, the integral is equal to, now a is equal to minus 2, so it's minus 2 plus 1 minus 1 minus is 1. So integral, so if this is 1 over x squared from 1 to infinity, this area is equal to 1. Okay? If a is equal to minus 3, for instance, I will have 1 half. It would be even closer to um, x-axis in this case. So it would be half of this area. All right? Okay, fine. Let's do the next problem. And the next problem is, instead of limits from 1 to infinity, I will have from 0 to 1. Now, again, in this case, it's not interesting, actually, to consider positive a, because in this case, um, oh, sorry. Because in this particular case, obviously, integral would be definite and proper right? So we are not talking about positive A, we are talking about negative to get the infinity here. And we are talking about this area. From 0 to 1, but this is infinity, so we have a problem. We have improper integral. So, in this particular case, we can say that this is limit. 
from b to 1 x to the power of a dx now again they are considering these and again let's consider the case when a is uh, not equal to minus 1 in which case I can say exactly the same thing as in the previous case that this is I forgot the word limit here as b goes to 0 limit b goes to 0 and what's the indefinite integral x to the power a plus 1 over a plus 1 uh, from b to 1 okay so from 1 over a plus 1 right if we want uh, if I substitute 1 minus b to the power of a plus 1 divided by a plus 1 again let me factor out one over a plus one and I will have one minus limit b to the power a plus one divided by not divided b goes to zero now b goes to zero so b is infinitesimal variable if a plus one is greater than zero or even equal to zero actually then infinitesimal no let me just forget about equal to zero if it's greater than zero so this is the positive power and this is infinitesimal variable because b goes to zero so whenever i'm raising my infinitesimal variable into the positive power it's still infinitesimal so under this condition this thing is infinitesimal and limit is equal to zero so my result would be one over a plus one now i specifically did not put zero here because that means a is equal to minus one and we have agreed that this is not the case right so a is greater than minus one or if you wish from minus one to zero since the positive a we don't consider at all because it's a trivial case we are considering always over a negative a but in this case uh, it's greater than minus zero so from minus zero to zero now let's consider minus zero separately now if we consider minus zero separately then we will have here logarithm x right if a is equal to minus one now logarithm x if we will put one it would be uh, logarithm of one would, would be zero but if we will put b and b is infinitesimal so what happens is again this is logarithm if b is goes to zero logarithm goes to infinity which means there is no limit which means integral um, is not convergent to any real value so basically this is excluded case and the correct is only this one so the whole thing the whole integral is equal to 1 over a plus 1 but only if a greater than minus 1 for instance greater than minus 1 for instance minus 1 half just as an as an example what happens if a is equal to 1 half minus 1 half I mean so integral from 1 to 0 to 1 x to the power minus 1 half dx it's integral from 0 to 1 1 over square root of x dx now if a is equal to minus 1 half that would be 1 half it would be 2 so that's the answer and again remember this graph uh, this is 1 over square root of x it's higher this is 
1 over x. So it's higher than 1 over x um, on the, from 1 to infinity, but it's lower than 1 over x from 0 to 1. So what's interesting is 1 over x is divergent on both plus infinity and 0. So both integrals from 0 to 1 and from 1 to 0 are not convergent for 1 over x. But for those curves which are um, slightly turned over point 0.1, point 0.1, in this way, which means it's higher than 1 over x um, on the infinity, but lower than 1 over x close to 0, these are convergent here and divergent there. And the opposite thing, like this one, like 1 over x squared, which is lower than 1 over x on infinity, but higher when it goes to uh, 0, then it's convergent in this case and divergent uh, from 0 to 1. So this is something which you can feel about all these integrals when they are convergent and under what circumstances. So these are very kind of a typical examples and you can always think about if function behaves like 1 over I know, ax, ax plus b and you can even put a constant c here, whatever, doesn't matter. If it's something like this, it will be divergent everywhere. Now, if you have some degree here, some kind of a polynomial, let's say, of uh, degree greater than one, then it will be convergent on the infinity, but it, it will diverge from zero, around zero. And vice versa, if you have something like lower than one degree here again plus constant whatever it is then it's vice versa it will be um, divergent here but convergent around zero all right so these are just examples of improper integrals and how to approach them basically again all about the limits here it's no big deal really um, i would suggest you to go through these examples just by yourself. Um, they are obviously on unisor.com. Check if you have the same answers. Um, and well, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.